Hi, welcome to Quality of Life Ministries. <clears throat> we want to welcome you here. Um, you know, Tony Robbins is a, a great motivational speaker, um, and many people are being encouraged by Tony Robinson. So, you know, we <clears throat> we wanted to uh, open this up and, uh, you know, not make it about Tony Robbins, but we're also not here to judge, um, but to learn. And so, we're not here to judge Marty Robbins. We have family members that are encouraged by him, and many followers are being, their lives are being changed by following him and, and, and uh, taking his advice. And we really want to applaud Tony Robbins for all the work that he's accomplished and for all the people he's encouraging. But, uh, you know, there was uh, something he mentioned um, when he opened up. He said this, he says, What does it take to be happy? And it kind of got my attention. Um, and that's what I wanted to talk about. That's the name of this teaching. What does it take to be happy? Um, <clears throat> and Tony Robbins said progress. Um, nothing wrong with that. Progress equals happiness. Okay. And if you are improving, you will feel alive. I like that. And I think many of us would hear that and say, yeah, that's, that's cool. You know, that's okay. Um, but... You know, we want to go to the scripture, of course, and, and find out and ask the question. We want to ask God those questions. Um, what does it take, God, for me to be happy? You know, that's, that's the kind of question us believers in Christ ask. And so, and so that's why, you know, we're going to go to a guy named Solomon. Now, this is Solomon. He is the one who wrote Proverbs. He is the wisdom guy. And so God has um, given him the gift of wisdom, and so that's why he wrote the Proverbs. And there's a proverb for each day, and that's, that's wisdom for life. Um, and so we're going to just uh, look at some of the things that Solomon, you know, he denied himself nothing. And I'm going to Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. And you can read that in your spare time, or you can follow along and read that as we're doing this teaching. But these are some of the things that he um, gathered and, he, um, and things that he accomplished in his life. Um, and he felt like, you know, if he had these things and if he did these certain things, um, then he would be happy. And so these are some of the things. These are just a list, uh, a few things that I've listed down in uh, those verses that he's uh, collected for himself. Um, he said he cheered himself up with wine. How many of us, before Christ, said that very thing? If I had... Um, a drink, then I'd be happy. Okay, um, we can all relate to that. Um, he built homes, big, huge homes, not just homes. How many of us have said, "If I have just the right size of house, then I'll be happy"? Many of us have said that. Um, or if we're in an apartment, and if we said, "Well, if I just lived in a house and not an apartment, then I'd be happy." How many of us have said that? This is something he did. He built huge homes, homes, plural, for himself. Not just one home. He had many homes, and they were huge. <clears throat> he planted uh, beautiful vineyards in all of his huge homes. So can you imagine not only having a home, but homes. And so he planted vineyards in every single huge home that he had. Um, and he said he, he actually made gardens and parks as well with all kinds of fruit trees in them. Um, he built reservoirs to collect the water to irrigate um, his many flourishing groves. Many, again that's plural. He had many flourishing, flourishing groves, okay, of many fruit trees. He actually said he bought slaves, men and women, who were actually born in his own, his own household. He had large herds of flocks. Um, huge, large, huge herds and flocks. More than any one of the kings in Jerusalem. Um, he collected great sums of silver and gold. You know, how many of us have said, uh, you know, if I just had the right motorcycle, I'd be happy. If I just had that, that uh, 2000 and 2016 Harley Davidson, then I'd be happy. Or, 
How about, oh, if I just made more money? See, I never had money. Now, if I made money, if I had more money, certainly I'd be happier. Well, this is something he did. He collected great sums of silver and gold for himself. Treasures, the treasures, the treasure of many kings and provinces. He actually hired singers, wonderful singers, not just mediocre singers, but he hired wonderful singers. It's like us going out today and, and we want to throw a party and we go out and hire, um, you know, a real popular um, singer today and invite them over to our house and, and to entertain our friends. Um, so he hired wonderful singers, both men and women, and had many beautiful concubines. He didn't have just a few girlfriends. He had many. It says here that he had many beautiful concubines. Okay. He had everything a man could ever desire. He says, anything I wanted, I would just take it. You know, there was nothing in this world that he didn't try to make him happy. He tried to make himself happy, and he denied himself nothing. I like this, because he says, anything I wanted, I would just take it. I denied myself nothing. No pleasure. None. He denied himself no pleasure at all. He says, I even found great pleasure in hard work and reward for all of my labors. Us guys can relate to this because if we can accomplish just enough in a day, then we can go to bed at night and say, you did good today. You accomplished a lot. And sometimes we find pleasure in that, us guys. Or look how many people, how many friends I have now because I did this. You know, we can find great pleasure in that, in hard work, and the reward for our labors. He even said this, um, um, well, let me ask you this question, okay? <clears throat> that's, that's good enough. That's a good enough list. Um, and if you want to read about it, read about those things in Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verses 1 through 11, you may. But those are just some of the things that he accomplished and um, denied himself of those things. He just took those things and tried to find happiness in all of that stuff. Let me ask you the question, do you think Solomon was a happy man after doing all that, after collecting all that? He says he found great pleasure in, in what he did. Anything he wanted, he would take. Can you imagine that? Do you, let me, as you think about that question, do you think Solomon was a very happy man after he had accomplished so much for himself? Many of us would say, well, yeah. Who wouldn't be happy? The answer might surprise you. And it surely surprised me, us, my wife and I. It sure surprised us because we were thinking that, uh, that if I just had this, I'd be happy. If I just had more money, I'd be happy. If I just had this, you know, this house, I'd be happy. Or if I just had this motorcycle, I'd be happy, you know. Um, Look what he says here. But I looked at uh, everything that I had worked so hard to accomplish. And this is in verse 11. Um, Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verses 11. He says, I, had worked, I, I looked at everything that I had worked so hard to accomplish. It was all so meaningless. By chasing the wind, there was nothing really worthwhile anywhere. Wow. Incredible. All of this stuff that he accomplished, all these things that he had, didn't make him happy. You know, Pascal um, said this. He said, there was a God-shaped vacuum in the heart of every human being that could not be filled by any created thing, only by God made known through Jesus Christ. In closing, um, a friend of mine, a mentor, posted this on his Facebook, and uh, if he hears this message, he'll, he'll know who he is. He's uh, a great encourager, uh, brother in the Lord, and uh, I won't mention his name out of dignity for him and respect for him. Um, but uh, he posted this, and he said, there is a saying, having more money just makes you more of whoever you are to begin with. You know, <clears throat> everyone who accepts and believes in Jesus Christ, God gives them the right to be called children of God. You know, the scripture says that we're complete through our union with Christ. In other, in other words, Jesus has become our happy, 
our happy pill. That's why we read in the scripture and it says, The joy of the Lord is our strength. And in Him, we are complete with His joy. And so we live from joy, not happiness. Let me give you a little bit of um, difference between the two. Happiness is really going to be based on my happenings. Another word for happiness is happenings. Okay, it's, it's what's happening in my life. Okay, one day I'm on top of the mountain. The next day I'm down in the valley. And see, I'm happy on the mountain, but down in the valley I'm not so happy. You see, and so I'm going to find my happiness through my circumstances. And you know, we live in a world that's just falling apart, really. It's a fallen world. The scripture talks about that. And we're not going to talk about that because that's not what the teaching's about. And we live in bodies that are decaying and getting older. I hate to say it, but we are getting older. And we can't fix these bodies up forever. Eventually, they're going to, you know, do their thing. And um, so we have to remember that uh, our identity is not going to be tied up in what we accomplish and what we do in this world. It's going to be tied up in who we are in Christ. And so that identity goes with us forever. And so, you remember, we're, uh, we're learning um, so we can teach. We're teaching so we can learn. So we take from this teaching as well, and we learn from this, because we're not there. We're not perfect, acting Christians. We're learning that this world is, you know, it's okay to have these things. I love the scripture that says, Seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and then these things will be added. All of these things is what we're talking about. House, relationships, marriage, um, jobs. Um, and so all of these things, entertainment, um, nice things, nothing's wrong with that. Um, and so, but when we find our fulfillment in Christ and live from the inside out, we're going to discover that even when I'm riding my motorcycle with my wife down the road, you know, I can be just as happy and fulfilled in Christ doing that as I can just sitting here doing this teaching and sitting with you fine folks. Remember, you're the most important person here because without you, we could not teach. We learn so we can teach. We teach so we can learn like I was saying. And so, thank you and God bless from Quality of Life Ministries.